Hi, welcome to today's video. In today's video, we are going to take a look at the classroom as a learning environment and talk about the different types of technology in that learning envir environment. So, just so you guys know, um, we're going to do this on a mind map, and the mind map is called MindJet. So this is the app we're using. It's free. I downloaded it from the App Store today. So again, right now, here we go. We are talking about the learning environment. So we have two sides to our learning environment. Number one, we really have some of the types of technology available in the classroom. For example, we have our smart board, our one-to-one, -one, um, some stations that could be a station in a classroom or like a computer lab, a single device in a classroom, or no devices. On the other side, we are going to take a look at um, some different types of learning with technology, cloud-based, flipped or the blended model, and online learning. So first of all, let's go ahead and take a look at um, some, some of the types of technology. For example, smart boards. Smart boards are a great tool and a great type of technology. Um, as you can see, we have the pros, uh, and it's interactive, and it has some great software that's included, and some of the cons. It is expensive, and it is presenter-centered. Of course, just for each of these, there are more cons and more pros, but we're only going to focus on a few. So those are a few of the pros and cons for having a smart board. A uh, great tool, in my opinion. Now let's take a look at having one of my favorite things, one-to-one, -one, one device per one student. Uh, we have a few, usually, choices one-to-one. -to -one -to -one. We have tablets, computers, and bring your own device. Now, as far as one-to-one -one goes, it's great because it really gives students equal access and provides them with a lot of differentiation. But it can be expensive, and there's heavy training uh, for teachers as well as IT support that is needed. Um, we'll come back to the different devices in just a moment. Let's talk about stations. Again, stations could be a station of iPads, a station of computers, or it can be a station that you go to, such as a computer lab. Now, some of the pros are the differentiation and either access for some students or just access some of the time if it's a computer lab. Um, some of the cons is you're really limited by the activities you can do if you have to share or you have limited time in the computer. And of course, that sharing one. Either students have to share uh, stations within the classroom or students have to share with other classes if it's a computer lab. And again, well, stations, we'll talk about the um, tablet and the computer as uh, some types of stations. Now, one device, which is not normally something you see anymore, but, you know, pro is that you do have some access versus your cons, where you have very limited differentiation and very limited access. But I guess one device is better than no devices, in my opinion. Now, finally, there's no devices, and some people just say, hey, technology has a room and a place outside of the classroom. And in those classrooms, really, it's a pro to have that face to face interaction with people. Um, you're spending a lot of time just interacting with those people. The cons is you're really having no access to the internet. So that's just kind of some different types of technologies you can have in the classroom. Of course there's more available. Now looking at the types of devices, perhaps just a quick overview of some pros and cons for each of them. Now some of these could maybe be arguable, but um, just like everything, I think you can provide uh, evidence from both sides. So for tablets, I think tablets are really good, in my opinion, for consuming information as well um, as annotation. Um, they're also very portable, which kind of connects to consuming information. Some of the cons is uh, some people have a problem with not having the full keyboard. Me, personally, I don't mind. And also, most tablets have a limited operating system. Um, which can limit the things that you can do. As far as computers, if we're not looking specifically, if we're looking at a full computer as opposed to maybe a Chromebook, um, one of the pros is they do have a full operating system, and I, f I feel in some ways they're better at producing certain products um, because you have, again, more access to some of the tools on the web 
as far as you have a, a mouse and a keyboard, which in some cases can be better. Some cons is they are bigger and bulkier than the tablets, and they can take up a lot of space on the desks. And I think for some students, they are less tactile because it's not that direct hand-to-hand -hand interaction with the device. Um, now, there's also this bring your own device, which could be a big old mix of, of everything. And it's great because I think it's very cost effective. Students are bringing the devices, and it's giving students really the device that they want to bring in. However, teachers, on the other hand, are dealing with numerous types of devices, and not every student necessarily has one of their own. And I think really a lot of these problems with the devices, for example, um, in stations, you're going to have some of these pros and cons for tablets. Pros and cons for computer, very similar, as you can see the lines kind of connecting them. As far as one device goes, sometimes that one device could be tablets, but most of the time it's computers. And again, some of the same pros and cons. So flipping over here to the other side, thinking about not necessarily the types and the amounts of devices, but thinking more about the connectivity um, aspect, I think. So... There's three types of learning environments that I've kind of added to this. One cloud-based, one flipped or blended, and the other is just your online learning. Now, as far as cloud-based goes, one of the greatest pros is you really have access anywhere that you go. And it's a great tool for collaborating with people, either in the classroom or outside of the classroom. Um, a con, it requires the internet, and there's also many different tools and choices, many different cloud-based services, and even when you have a cloud, like for example, Google Apps for Education, there's lots of different tools connected to that, which could be good, but also can be a lot for a single teacher to know. So again, this could be a pro or this could be a con, depending upon who you are. Now, in the flipped or blended model, I think one of the pros is when teachers are making some of these screencasts, that it, it helps maximize time spent in class helping students. And students usually have perpetual access to this lesson that they can go to and watch over and over again if they have a confusion. However, it is very time consuming for teachers to produce videos. And um, some might say that students have less accountability if they're watching the videos at home um, for the knowledge that they're accessing. So again, the, looking at these two in the learning environment now, oops, we have our third one, which is our online learning. What's well, great because as a student, you can access numerous courses anywhere you are from your computer or your device. And there's a lot of choices. However, it is limited in the face-to-face -face viewing, and also it requires the Internet. Um, so, again, overall, I was looking at the learning environment as far as technology goes, and just a quick overview of some of the pros and some of the cons. So, as always, thanks for watching. Again, this was a video made and produced by uh, me, Coach Ben. So, with that being said, thanks again. Bye-bye.